Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Centauro RGO, though I'll just be referring to it as the RGO. This is a currently 11.3 BR pack premium light tank in the Italian Ground Forces tech tree, though of course, flies with the flag of Oman. The pack that it comes in currently costs $69.99 USD when not on sale. It includes 2,500 Golden Eagles, 20 days of premium time, and of course, the RGO, which stands for Royal Guard of Oman. With that said, in this video, I'll be going over everything that you need to know about this vehicle, including its stats, how it plays. I'll go over its strengths and weaknesses, I'll give it some scores in several key areas, and then I'll give my final recommendation and if I feel this vehicle is worth purchasing or not. With that said, if you like this kind of video, please consider subscribing, but without further ado, let's get into it. Now to start, I'll place its stat card here on the side of the screen. Important things to know are its reload rate, overall mobility, and armor thickness. Now for how it plays. Put simply, this is basically a Centauro I-120, except with a slightly worse power to weight ratio and somewhat different turret. This means that the RGO is a hell of a scout, flanker, and sniper, owing to its still excellent mobility, a fantastic cannon, and very good gunner's optics, which has great zoom and very nice Gen 2 thermals. This means that you can also cap bases with ease, but in my experience, if you start in a match by flanking, you will have a tremendous amount of success on average. This is due to the lack of armor on the RGO as it can barely withstand weaker auto cannons from the front, which means that this vehicle should not be playing as a frontliner, a brawler, and even kind of as a support as doing so is dicey, but even then supporting is not an ideal role for this vehicle. Due to this lack of armor, unless of course cutting through the unprotected center of a map, such as through a city, any direct engagement with enemies, such as again while frontlining and brawling, is not recommended. In its preferred roles, however, the RGO shines brighter than almost every other premium in game. It is a phenomenal scout, sniper, and flanker, and can easily combine all three roles in order to devastate enemies. Because of its 120mm CL3143 APFSDS shells, along with its very good optics, the RGO can fairly easily destroy enemies at a range, especially while flanking and catching people by surprise. When combined with the lightning quick reload that can be as low as 5 seconds, the RGO can easily wipe out a column of enemy tanks accurately, quickly, and from far away. Way, all while scouting any vehicles that may have gotten away. In my experience, the RGO has easily been one of the best scouts and snipers at top tier that I've played, again, owing to its fantastic armament and supporting technologies. Because of all this, however, the RGO is best played aggressively. You can choose to sit back and snipe, but doing so while quickly moving from place to place while keeping hidden is what the Centauro does best. Playing conservatively will still get kills with this vehicle, but this beast of a vehicle shall when doing scouting, flanking, and sniping, and also, of course, incidentally capping bases when you can. Just stay away from direct enemy fire, and the RGO can rip apart the enemy with ease. Now with that said, let's get into its strengths and weaknesses, and first for its strengths. It has an excellent reload rate that can be as low as 5 seconds, depending on crew skill. Second, it has an excellent 120mm cannon with up to 589mm of armor pen with its CL3143 APF SDS shell. Third, this vehicle has great Gen 2 thermals on both the gunner's and commander's optics. Fourth, it has very good but not great gunner's optics with 8 to 12 times zoom. Fifth, it features a top mounted 50 cal HMG and a 7.62 millimeter LMG, as well as a coax LMG, all of which will help out versus aircraft and lightly armored vehicles. Beyond this, despite being 4.5 tons heavier than the similar BR Centauro I-120, the RGO still has excellent mobility, of which is pretty much identical compared compared to the premium VRCC that's lower in the premium tech tree. On a quick side note, the RGO does actually have 30 more horsepower compared to the I-120, so at least it makes up for some of its additional weight. For its 7th strength, the RGO features an excellent vertical cannon targeting speed of between 20 and 28.65 degrees per second, depending on crew skill. This is among the best in-game for non-SPAA vehicles. For its 8th strength, the RGO features a laser warning receiver. Ninth, it also has a Scout UAV. For its 10th strength, occasionally, and this isn't so much of a strength but more of a side effect of its armor, because said armor is so thin, shots may just pass through the RGO with minimal internal or crew damage. And finally, it has premium RP and SL bonuses. Now for its weaknesses. 
First, it only has negative 6 degrees of cannon depression. Second, it features a limited number of smoke grenades with only 8 in total. For its third weakness, the RGO features poor overall armor. Though it is just good enough to stop most HMGs in most areas and some auto cannons from the front. Fourth, this vehicle has a tight turret with a cramped crew that means that total turret crew loss in a single hit is fairly common, at least versus larger shells. For its fifth weakness, there are two huge ammo racks at the rear of the vehicle with no blowout panels. Sixth, the RGO, like other Centauros, is very large, making it fairly easy to spot, target, and hit. Seventh, because it is a wheeled vehicle, it will have a much more difficult time on terrain like mud and sand compared to tracked vehicles. Also, wheels are far easier to destroy than tank tracks. And finally, though this vehicle is very fast, especially from mid to high speed, it does take a little bit of time to start going from a stop. Now, with all that said, let's get into how I score this vehicle. And first, for its armament, I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Between its excellent cannon size, armor pen, and fantastic reload rate, along with the roles that this vehicle exploits, the armament on the Centauro RGO is fantastic and is among the best in War Thunder, premium or otherwise. Between its two LMGs, single 50 cal HMG, Gen 2 thermals, very good optics, excellent reload rate, and of course, its fantastic overall armor pen and damage, the RGO can attack anyone without fear. I'd possibly give it an even higher armament score if it broke the 600mm barrier with its armor pen, as some tanks have done that at top BR, but it likely doesn't even matter with the RGO, again due to its role as a flanker. When you think of this vehicle, you'd probably think, wow, that's fast, and that's the first thing that comes to mind. After playing it, however, the first thing that I think of is its armament, followed very closely by its excellent mobility. The RGO's overall armament package is that good. Now with that said, for its mobility, I give it a 7.75 .7 out of 10. While not the best in game as a light tank in terms of mobility, as the RGO has about a 10% lower power to weight ratio compared to the very similar Centauro I-120, the RGO is still plenty fast and will allow you to flank and spank better than most vehicles. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, the mobility bogs down a little on the lower end as you start to move, as the acceleration isn't all that quick to start, but once you get going, the RGO will move as quickly as you need to go and will, at that point, start gaining speed quickly enough. Another slight weakness of this vehicle is when it goes off-road, but more so versus mud, snow, and sand, but even still, it's not all too terrible on those terrains. It's just not as good as tracked vehicles typically, especially from a standstill. Regardless, in my opinion, aside from that and the meandering first gear or so, the RGO's mobility is perfect for its aggressive playstyle and will not let you down. Now for survivability, I give it a 3 out of 10. Obviously, the armor and overall survival ability on the RGO is poor, especially compared to well-armored MBTs, but it can still somehow survive somewhat decently well, at least compared to how you might think. Most of the time, the Centauro RGO will be a fairly easy one-shot kill, but its engine and decent for its class armor will stop some auto cannons from the front of the hull, as well as some highly angled MBT shells. On occasion, the armor will simply allow an overpen of APF SDS shells, which can also save it. Otherwise, the RGO is a very easy vehicle to kill. It has limited smoke grenades, largely mediocre armor, large ammo racks, no blowout panels, and a large profile. All things that make this thing easy to kill. On the other hand, relative to similar tanks, it's not all that bad, but its survivability is still mediocre compared to almost every other type of vehicle in the matches that you'll be playing. On occasion, its front-mounted engine will stop some shells, especially those from lower pending auto cannons, and even its frontal armor isn't all that bad, so I may be giving it somewhat of a low score for 3 out of 10, but probably Probably not. This thing really can't take hits without taking some sort of major damage, typically. There are still worse light tanks in terms of survivability compared to the RGO, but again, that doesn't mean that it's survivable by any means in most scenarios. Now, overall, I give the RGO a 7 out of 10. Yes, I know, the average of my scores is around 6.4 out of 10, not 7 out of 10, but due to the role and overall purpose of this vehicle, I am weighing armament and mobility more than survivability. With that said, the RGO excels in its roles, which is essentially that of a fast tank destroyer. It has an excellent cannon
cannon that's paired with an equally fantastic reload rate and APF SDS shell. It is also very mobile, which aids in flanking and scouting, both things that this vehicle is among the best at in War Thunder. In all, while the RGO is obviously not all that survivable, it was never meant to be. Instead, it more than excels at what it was meant to do, and is easily one of the most high-fun BR tanks in War Thunder as a result. Now, with that said, do I recommend the Centauro RGO for purchase? Yes, I do, although with a few caveats. As you may have seen in my other reviews of similar BR vehicles, I feel that the full price of $69.99 USD is a bit high for any digital vehicle, and as such, will typically recommend these only for sales. The RGO is no different in that regard. This does not mean, however, that this is a bad vehicle, as I have had more fun and success with the RGO due to its incredibly aggressive playstyle characteristics than I have had with any other high-tier premium tank to date. There are some vehicles that are fun, but are bad, and some that are great but aren't all that fun. The Centauro RGO is, in my opinion, as an aggressive player of War Thunder, an incredible mixture of both fun and success, which makes it easily one of my favorite new premium vehicles in the entire game, and that is not a very common mix of traits. Because of all this, I fully recommend this vehicle when on sale, and give a price warning to those who do not want to wait for a sale, and will say to those people who do not again want to wait for a sale, that this vehicle vehicle benefits aggressive playstyles. If you are not the type of player to blitz the enemy in most matches, then you may want to wait for a sale. Otherwise, the RGO receives my Tankenstein seal of approval, as it is just so damn good and so damn fun. I only wish that it weighed a touch less and was a bit different functionally compared to the Centauro I-120 in the regular tech tree. Those small gripes aside, the RGO is my new Italian mistress. That said though, thanks so much for watching. If you don't mind, please consider commenting on this video with your opinion on the RGO and of course this review. Also, if you would like more content like this, please consider subscribing as it would help me out tremendously. Either way, thanks again and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care everyone.